We are on to chapter 30 of A Course in Miracles. We're close to the end of the text now. This chapter is called The New Beginning, and it's based on one line in the last paragraph of the last chapter, and I'm going to read that to you right now. Um, it starts with the, it starts with forgiving dreams remind you that you live in safety and have not attacked yourself. So do your childish terrors melt away and dreams become a sign that you have made a new beginning, not another try to worship idols and to keep attack. So this is referring to um, the two, poss two possible dreams, right? Um, we live in a dream world and our dream can be a dream of evil and what Jesus calls an evil dream, a dream of attack and separation and, and um, putting the, projecting the blame outside of ourself or projecting the problem outside of ourself. Or it could be where we follow the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the vision of the Holy Spirit, and we, we turn the dream into a dream of forgiveness. And so that's the new beginning. And, and in, in doing the course, we basically have made this new beginning. But now this chapter is um, interesting in the sense that it looks a lot like a workbook lesson, actually. And you'll see why, because there's, there's quite a few things in italics, just like in the workbook. It is giving you some things to work on. It's like a practice, and it even uses the term you know, now we're getting into a pract practical things that you can do, right? So, so we have the theory. The text of a court of the course presents the theory. The workbook presents the practice, the application. Jesus says that um, the application, the practice, is is very important. It, it's, you know, the theory means nothing without the practice. Although the theory itself can be very helpful. Um, but you still need to, to change your mind, right? And so this, this section, this chapter is um, a big start in that direction, okay? Not that Jesus hasn't already talked about this throughout the text, but, but now he's, he's taking it a little deeper, okay? So the, the, this is the original name of the chapter. It was called The New Beginning, uh, except it did not have this little introduction at the beginning. It, it did have the introduction, it just wasn't called introduction. Okay, so here's the introduction. The new beginning now becomes the focus of the curriculum. The goal is clear, but now you need specific methods for attaining it. The speed by which it can be reached depends on this one thing alone, your willingness to practice every step. Each one will help a little every time it is attempted. And together will these steps lead you from dreams of judgment to forgiving dreams and out of pain and fear. They are not new to you, but they are more ideas than rules of thought to you as yet. So now we need to practice them a while until they are the rules by which you live. We seek to make them habits now, so you will have them ready for whatever need. Okay, we're going we're gonna to talk about all of this. Um, but let's, let's read this whole section called Rules for Decision now. It's a long section, so here we go. Decisions are continuous. You do not always know when you are making them. But with a little practice with the ones you recognize, a set begins to form which sees you through the rest. It is not wise to let yourself become preoccupied with every step you take. The proper set, adopted consciously each time you wake, will put you well ahead. And if you find resistance strong and dedication weak, you are not ready. Do not fight yourself. But think about the kind of day you want and tell yourself there is a way in which this very day can happen just like that. Then try again to have the day you want. The outlook starts with this. Today I will make, this is in italics now, today I will make no decisions by myself. This means that you are choosing not to be the judge of what to do. But it must also mean you will not judge the situations where you will be called upon to make response. For if you judge them, you have set the rules for how you should react to them. And then another answer cannot but produce confusion and uncertainty and fear. This is your major problem now. 
you still make up your mind and then decide to ask what you should do. And what you hear may not resolve the problem as you saw it first. This leads to fear because it contradicts what you perceive and so you feel attacked and therefore angry. There are rules by which this will not happen, but it does occur at first while you are learning how to hear. That was one. This is two now. Throughout the day and any time you think of it and have a quiet moment for reflection, tell yourself again the kind of day you want, the feelings you would have, the things you want to happen to you, and the things you would experience, and say, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. This is in italics. I'm going to read it again. If I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. These two procedures practice well will serve to let you be directed without fear for opposition will not first arise and then become a problem in itself. But there will still be times when you have judged already. Now the answer will provoke attack unless you quickly straighten out your mind to want an answer that will work. Be certain this has happened if you feel yourself unwilling to sit by and ask to have the answer given you. This means you have decided by yourself and cannot see the question. Now you need a quick restorative before you ask again. Three, remember once again the day you want and recognize that something has occurred that it is not part of it. Then realize that you have asked a question by yourself and must have set an answer in your terms. Then say, I have no question. I forgot what to decide. This cancels out the terms that you have set and lets the answer show you what the question must have really been. Try to observe this rule without delay, despite your opposition, for you have already gotten angry and your fear of being answered in a different way from what your version of the question asks will gain momentum until you believe the day you want is one in which you get your answer to your question. And you will not get it, for it would destroy the day by robbing you of what you really want. This can be very hard to realize when once you have decided by yourself the rules that promise you a happy day. Yet this decision still can be undone by simple methods that you can accept. Four, if you are so unwilling to receive, you cannot even let your question go. You can begin to change your mind with this. At least I can decide I do not like what I feel now. This is in italics. At least I can decide I do not like what I feel now. This must this much is obvious and paves the way for the next easy step. Five, having decided that you do not like the way you feel, what could be easier than continue with? And so I hope I have been wrong. Again, italics. And so I hope I have been wrong. This works against the sense of opposition and reminds you that help is not being thrust upon you, but is something that you want and that you need because you do not like the way you feel. This tiny opening will be enough to let you go ahead with just a few more steps you need to let yourself be helped. Now you have reached the turning point because it has occurred to you that you will gain if what you have decided is not so. Until this point is reached, you will believe your happiness depends on being right. But this much reason have you now attained. You would be better off if you were wrong. Six, this tiny grain of wisdom will suffice to take you further. You are not coerced, but merely hope to get a thing you want. And you can say in perfect honesty, I want another way to look at this. Now you have changed your mind about the day and have remembered what you really want. Its purpose has no longer been obscured by the insane belief you want it for the goal of being right when you are wrong. Thus is the readiness for asking brought to your awareness, for you cannot be in conflict when you ask for what you want and see that it is this for which you ask. This final step is but acknowledgement of lack of opposition to be helped. It is a statement of an open mind, not certain yet, but willing to be shown. Perhaps there is another way to look at this. What can I lose by asking? This is also in italics. Perhaps there is another way to look at this. What can I lose by asking? Thus, you now can ask a question that makes sense and so the answer will make sense as well. Nor will you fight against it, for you see that it is you who will be helped by it. 
it must be clear that it is easier to have a happy day if you prevent unhappiness from entering at all. But this takes practice in the rules that will protect you from the ravages of fear. When this has been achieved, the sorry dream of judgment has forever been undone. But meanwhile, you have need for practicing the rules for, us, for its undoing. Let us then consider once again the very first of the decisions which are offered here. We said you could begin a happy day with the determination not to make decisions by yourself. This seems to be a real decision in itself. And yet you cannot make decisions by yourself. The only question really is what, with what you choose to make them. That is really all. The first rule then is not coercion, but a simple statement of a simple fact. You will not make decisions by yourself, whatever you decide, for they are made with idols or with God. And you will, and you ask help of any Christ or Christ, and which you choose will join with you and tell you what to do. Your day is not at random. It is set by what you choose to live it with and how the friend whose counsel you have sought perceives your happiness. You always ask advice before you can decide on anything. Let this be understood and you can see there cannot be coercion here, nor grounds for opposition that you may be free. There is no freedom from what must occur. And if you think there is, you must be wrong. The second rule as well is but a fact. For you and your advisor must agree on what you want before it can occur. It is but this agreement that permits all things to happen. Nothing can be caused without some form of union, be it with a dream of judgment or the voice for God. Decisions cause results because they are not made in isolation. They are made, made by you and your advisor for yourself and for the world as well. The day you want you offer to the world for it will be what you have asked for and will reinforce the rule of your advisor in the world. Whose kingdom is the world for you today? What kind of day will you decide to have? It needs but two who would have happiness this day to promise it to all the world. It needs but two to understand that they cannot decide alone to guarantee the joy they asked for will be wholly shared. For they have understood the basic law that makes decision powerful and gives it all effects that it will ever have. It needs but two. These two are joined before there can be a decision. Let this be the one reminder that you keep in mind and you will have the day you want and give it to the world by having it yourself. Your judgment has been lifted from the world by your decision for a happy day. And as you have received, so, you, so must you give. Okay, this is a long section. I don't know if we're going to get through all of it. We're, we're going to try. Let's, let's go over the, in, the introduction again. The new beginning now becomes the focus of the curriculum. The curriculum is the, the course, right? Um, the goal is clear. The goal of the course is clear, right? The purpose that we're striving for, the goal that we're striving for is, is, is to return home to our true self, right? That is the goal. But now you need specific methods for attaining it. The speed by which it can be reached depends on this one thing alone, your willingness to practice every step. Each one will help a little every time it is attempted. Now this is this makes clear that this is a process here, right? This is not like like all of a sudden, you know, it's just gonna happen. You you we we've gone we followed the ego so for so long now and so so far that we need to we need to retrace our steps. We need to go on a new journey, you know, as it's been put up, up the ladder of forgiveness now and not up the ladder of judgment anymore, right? We're turning the dream of judgment into a dream of forgiveness. Uh, and that, that takes, that, that takes practical steps. And together will these steps lead you from dreams of judgment to forgiving dreams and out of pain and fear. They are not new to you, but they are more ideas than rules of thought to you as yet. So now we need to practice them a while until they are the rules by which you live. We need to make them habits now so you will have them ready for whatever need. So we're, we're, now we're trying to make this into a habitual thing. And it, basically what it is, is instead of automatically judging, we will automatically forgive. 
it will be, it will, it, we will not have a second thought about it. Rules for decision. Decisions are continuous. You do not always know when you are making them. But with a little practice with the ones you recognize, a set begins to form which sees you through the rest. It is not wise to let yourself become preoccupied with every step you take. The proper set adopted consciously each time you wake will put you well ahead. And if you find resistance strong and dedication weak, you are not ready. Do not fight yourself. You can't, you can't coerce this to happen. You have to, you have to truly want it. When you truly want it, it, it will all, everything will fall into place. But don't fight your, the resistance. If you feel the resistance, um, you know, coercion does not work, right? Punishing yourself or fighting yourself is not going to, it's not going to help. But think about the, day, the kind of day you want and tell yourself there is a way in which this very day can happen just like that. Then try again to have the day you want. The outlook starts with this. It's number one. In italics, today I will make no decisions by myself. This means that you are choosing not to be the judge of what to do. But it must also mean you will not judge the situations where you will be called upon to make, a, make response. For if you judge them, you have set the rules for how you should react to them. And then another answer cannot but produce confusion and uncertainty and fear. This is your major problem now. So we judge things all the time, right? And we, 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 we think this is how this is. This is what the situation is. This is what's happening here. I know, you know, I know what's going on. And I can, I can accurately judge what's happening here. And I know what's right. <laughs> Jesus says, um, don't be so sure about that. <laughs> um, you, have to, you have to understand what, what teacher are you following, right? In making these judgments. This is your major problem. Now you still make up your mind and then decide to ask what you should do. And what you hear may not resolve the problem as you saw at first. This leads to fear because it contradicts what you perceive and so you feel attacked and therefore angry. So for example, if you, if you judge a situation generally coming from the ego, right? And so, you, so, so now you're gonna follow the ego in, in, um, you know, in asking what you should do about the situation, then, then you're gonna follow the ego. You're not gonna follow the Holy Spirit. And it's going to get even more upsetting for you and more and and you're going to end up getting angry. There are rules by which this will not happen, but it does occur at first while you are learning how to hear. Throughout the day, at any time you think of it and have a quiet moment for reflection, tell yourself again the kind of day you want, the feelings you would have, the kind, the things you want to happen to you and the things you would experience and say, if I make no decisions by myself, this is the day that will be given me. <clears throat> so we're, we're learning not to um, trust our own judgment at first because generally it's, it's colored by the ego. Sometimes we're completely following the ego. <laughs> um, so if I make no decision by myself, this is the day that will have given, given me these two procedures practice well will serve to let you be directed without fear for opposition will not first arise and then become a problem in itself. But there will still be times when you have judged already. Now the answer will provoke attack unless you quickly straighten out your mind to want an answer that will work. Be certain this has happened if you feel yourself unwilling to sit by and ask to have the answer given you. This means you have decided by yourself and cannot see the question. Now you need a quick restorative before you ask again. Remember once again the day you want and recognize that something has occurred that it is not that is not part of it. Then realize that you have asked a question by yourself and must have set an answer in your terms. Then say, I have no question. I forgot what to decide. This cancels out the terms that you have set and lets the answer show, show you what the question must have really been. So we're... We get off track and then Jesus is trying to help us to show us how to get back on track. 
right? And it basically, you know, I think what this comes down to is you, you get up in the morning, <laughs> for example, and you say, I, I want a day of peace. I want a day of, of um, understanding and forgiveness. I want a day um, where I, I am in harmony with my brethren. I want a day where um, things are flowing and, and um, you know, there's good feeling, good vibes with everyone, right? That's a great way to start <laughs> your day. But if things start to, to go astray from that, uh, you're following the wrong teacher, essentially, right? Um, and, and you may be resisting that because you've already decided, you've already made up your mind that you're right. <laughs> and so you've chosen not to be happy because you've decided, well, I'm seeing this right. I'm seeing this correctly, right? But Jesus is saying, no, if you are upset, if you're angry, if you're upset, disturbed, no, you are not seeing it correctly. No matter how you, th how right you think you are. <clears throat> Try to observe this rule without delay, despite your opposition, for you have already gotten angry and your fear of being answered in a different way from what your version of the question asks will m gain momentum until you believe the day you want is one in which you get your answer to your question and you will not get it for it would destroy the day by robbing you of what you really want. And what you really want um, is the peace of God, right? The miracle <laughs> that brings you to the peace of God. This can be very hard to realize when once you have decided by yourself the rules that promise you a happy day. Yet this decision still can be undone by simple methods that you can accept. So now Jesus is going to give us the simple way to undo what we have the you know the disharmony that we have that we have allowed in so number four if you are so unw unwilling to receive you cannot even let your question go you can begin to change your mind with this at least i can decide i do not like what i feel now so you say well i can't let that go but i also i realize i don't like the way this feels right I still, like, like, for example, that person is wrong. <laughs> that person did me an injustice. That person is a jerk. Um, they're, they, they're wrong. I am right. Right. So that, in our mind, that's generally how it goes, right? <laughs> but we can also say to ourselves, well, that may be true, but I don't like the way this feels. This does not feel good to me. And I, I may be right about this person, right? They may have, they may be wrong in this situation and they may have insulted me and disrespected me, but I still don't like the way this feels, right? So, so at least I can decide I do not like what I feel now. This must, this much is obvious and paves the way for the next easy step. Five, having decided that you do not like the way you feel, what could be easier than continue with? And so I hope I have been wrong. <laughs> right? So I'm open to being wrong. I hope I'm wrong about this. This works against the sense of opposition and reminds you that help is not being thrust upon you, but it's something that you want and that you need because you do not like the way you feel. This tiny opening will be enough to let you go ahead with just a few more steps you need to let yourself be helped. Now you have reached the turning point because it has occurred to you that you will gain if what you have decided is not so. Until this point is reached, you will believe your happiness depends on being right. But this, remember the thing about, would you rather be right or happy? <laughs> so now Jesus is saying, you're stuck right now on being right. But what you really want is to be happy. But this much reason have you now attained, you would be better off if you were wrong. Six, this, this tiny grain of wisdom will suffice to take you further. You are not coerced, but merely hope to get a thing you want. And you can say in perfect honesty, I want another way to look at this. So I, right now I'm seeing that I am right here. The other person's wrong. But I am open and, and I, w I actually do want to see this differently. Right? To bring peace here instead of 
and anger and upset and grievance, judgment, etc. Now you have changed your mind about the day and have remembered what you really want. Its purpose has no longer been obscured by, obscured by the insane belief you want it for the goal of being right when you are wrong. Thus is the readiness for asking brought to your awareness, for you cannot be in conflict when you ask for what you want and see that it is this for which you ask. This final step is but acknowledgement of lack of opposition to, to be helped. So now you're open to being helped, right? Before you were not. <laughs> but now you are open and you really, you, you realize you that that's what you really want. It is a statement of an open mind, not certain yet, but willing to be shown. Perhaps there is another way to look at this. This is, this is one of the workbook lessons, right? There is another way. Um, there's an, um, man, I forgot what it was. There, there's a, another way to look at this or something like that, right? What can I lose by asking? Perhaps there's another way to look at this. What can I lose by asking? Thus, you now can ask a question that makes sense. And so the answer will make sense as well. Nor will you fight against it for you see that it is you who will be helped by it. It must be clear that it is easier to have a happy day if you prevent unhappiness from entering at all. This is a very important point that, you know, Jesus is trying to get us to the point where we don't even get into this situation in the first place, <laughs> where we don't first decide that we're right, the other person's wrong, but then we need to backtrack and we need to, um, you know, go through this process of, of um, undoing what we just did. Right? He's saying you can get to the point where this is automatic. The, the non-judgment is automatic, <laughs> right? You, you stay in the peace of in the peace of God, no matter what. Every situation, right? Equ equanimity in all situations. It must be clear that it's easier to have a happy day if you prevent prevent unhappiness from entering at all. But this takes practice in the rules that will protect you from the ravages of fear. So you need to practice this. When this has been achieved, the sorry dream of judgment has forever been undone. But meanwhile, you have need for practicing the rules for its undoing. Let us then consider once again the very first of the decisions which are offered here. We said you can begin a happy day with the determination not to make decisions by yourself. This seems to be a real decision in itself. And yet you cannot make decisions by yourself. The only question really is with what you choose to make them. So you can choose with to choose you could choose the ego or you could choose the holy spirit right jesus and the holy spirit or ego uh jesus also uses the term antichrist he uses the term idols um um the only question really is with what you choose to make them that is really all the first rule then is not coercion but a still simple statement of a simple fact. You will not make decisions by yourself, whatever you decide, right? So that first statement, when you said, today I will make no decisions by myself. <laughs> you're, you're, you're saying the truth, right? It's a simple fact that you, will, you won't make any decisions by yourself. You're either gonna follow two, two things. You're either gonna follow the ego or you're gonna follow the Holy Spirit. So whichever, you choose, you won't be making decisions by yourself. You're going to be choosing one of those two teachers, right? Um, for they are made with idols or with God. And you, you ask help of Antichrist or Christ, and which you choose will join with you and tell you what to do. Your day is not at random. It is set by what you choose to live it with and how the friend whose counsel you have sought perceives your happiness. You always ask advice before you can decide on anything. Let this be understood and you can see there cannot be coercion here nor grounds for opposition that you may be free. There is no freedom from what must occur. And if you think there is, you must be wrong. <clears throat> I'm gonna, let's not go into that part <laughs> right now. Let's just go on. We're almost done here. The second rule as well is but effect. For you and your advisor must agree on what you want before it can occur. It is but this agreement that permits all things to happen. Nothing can be caused without some form of union, be it with a dream of judgment or the voice for God. So again, you could, you're either you're you're choosing between 
one of two possible voices to listen to or teachers to, to follow, either the, the teacher of judgment, which would be the ego, or the teacher of non-judgment, which is the voice for God, which is also called the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus and the Holy Spirit basically are the same thing. Um, nothing could be caused without some form of union be with the dream of judgment or the voice for God. Decisions cause results because they are not made in isolation. They are made by you and your advisor for yourself and for the world as well. The day you want, you offer to the world for it will be what you have asked for and will reinforce the rule of your advisor in the world. So if you follow the ego, you are, you are, um, bringing the ego more into the world, <laughs> right? And you are, you are reinforcing the ego, not only in your own mind, but, but in the minds of others as well. Uh, and if you choose the Holy Spirit, you're, you're doing the opposite. You're, you're reinforcing the Holy Spirit's thought system in your mind and you're, and you're bringing that more into the world. Whose kingdom is the world for you today? What kind of day will you decide to have? It needs but two. Now it's going to change. Now it was talking about you and your advisor. Your advisor is either the ego or the Holy Spirit. But now it's talking about you and your brother, right? And this is, this is an echo of Jesus in the Gospels where Jesus says, when two or more are gathered in my name, right? It needs but two who would have happiness this day to promise it to all the world. It needs but two to understand that they cannot decide alone to guarantee to guarantee the joy they asked for will be wholly shared. For they have understood the basic law that makes decision powerful and gives it all effects that it will ever have. It needs but two. These two are joined before there can be a decision. Let this be the one reminder that you keep in mind and you will have the day you want and give it to the world by having it yourself. Your judgment has been lifted from the world by your decision for a happy day and as you have received, so must you give. Um, th that was a reference also that last line, as you received, so must you give, um, reference to, to something Jesus said in the gospels. Um, but, um, anyway, you and your brother, right? It needs but two. When you forgive your brother, when you show your brother that there's nothing that he can do that can take the peace of God from you. He learns that. And in his seeing that and learning that you, it gets reinforced within yourself. And you see that that is the truth. Um, so the rules for a decision. I hope this was helpful. This is a very long video today. Um, next section is a lot shorter. <laughs> So we'll, we'll, we'll see you soon with that. Next section is called the freedom, freedom of will. And I think I'm going to do another quick video right now, a short video on, um, well, you'll see if you stay, stay tuned on this channel. Thank you so much. See you very soon.